This is Brett from Survival Comms. Okay, the first thing I got here is one of these little high terror radios, which is this is the uh, PD362. You get your instructions and stuff, which is a small UHF DMR radio. And what's neat about these, as opposed to the Motorola SL7550, uh, 7550, is that these will do analog also and they'll do wide and narrow band uh, in order to use wide band of course you need the entitlement key with the software but that's out there so that's not a problem at all this is a 3 watt UHF radio covers 430 to 470 megahertz it charges with the standard cellular telephone charger which is nice which is what it comes with right here and you also get a neat little plastic holster for it similar like a cell phone holster where you can just snap it in right there and carry it on or about your person if you chose to do it that way and a wrist lanyard I have the software and the wideband key for it but I do not have the programming cable yet I ordered a programming cable off of eBay for about eleven dollars and uh, I tried to make my own and it didn't work out successfully so for eleven dollars it was worth it just to go ahead and get myself a cable since they're available and you can see the soap only what's in there right now is just the test channels and it is a part 90 radio it's kind of a neat little uh, item to pick up and I look forward to putting it on the air and I'll do a follow-up video once I get it on the air this is another one of my purchases here this is a Motorola MoCom 35 which is a 10 watt UHF mobile radio it's synthesized as two channels it's really simple. It does have a, uh, a vibe responder, which is like a PL read in there, and so that's a that's a bonus that it came with that. The microphone is in really good shape. Works well. I did have to replace the strain relief back here, so that's why it looks kind of hanky. It had rubber wrapped around it and wire ties and stuff, so I shortened it up and redid the connector. You can see the radio has the factory locking bracket which is neat that it has that it uses like a uh, 2135 key it looks like to uh, unlock it which is nice so it's definitely a well constructed piece of equipment and this thing actually someone has programmed this it is on a couple of uh, ham repeater pairs however the radio needs an alignment so I paid five dollars for the radio just as a uh, addition to my little radio museum that being the case, the uh, uh, service instructions that I've seen available for it are running like the $20 range, which would be four times the amount of the radio itself. So at this point, I haven't uh, decided to make the plunge. Here's another item I picked up for the museum, which is a Johnson Mini Scan, which this is a VHF crystal controlled high band scanner, which is, covers 150 to 162 megahertz or 150 to 174 and it's in really good shape physically uh, it would not power up when I got it so I made repairs and managed to get it to power up however I believe the only thing that's operating on it is the audio amplifier um, so it's gonna need some more troubleshooting and again this is one of those items I paid five dollars for and the service instructions go for considerably more than that so I did just get it for a museum piece, so if I happen across the service information for it, then I will uh, attempt to affect repairs. Here's another really cool item that I picked up for five bucks. That uh, this is going to look really neat on the shelf. Also, this is a Johnson transceiver tester, and these are designed for uh, CB radios. And during the heyday of the CB days, which is back in the 70s, and you can see here, it's not just an SWR meter; it also has an internal dummy load, so it'll read your RF power into a into a known 50 ohm load. Uh, it has your inputs for your audio generator, the signal generator it has an output for your monitor for your speaker, so you can monitor your uh, microphone audio. It's got an S meter port on it, uh, crystal ports, and these are just your various adjustments, and of course your selector switch for whatever function you're trying to use the meter movement for so this is in really great shape and uh, I was very happy to pick this up it was just one of those items I uh, couldn't turn down here's a DF radio I picked up I paid a little bit more for this one here I paid fifteen dollars for this and uh, it was in really bad shape and I've cleaned it up and made a lot of different repairs to it the uh, 
it would power up, but essentially the selector knob for the band selector was inoperable and it was stuck in the VHF side. So about the only thing I could get was a weather channel. So when I took it apart, there's there's two sliders that sit parallel with one another inside there, and this uses like a gear that interfaces that to move that switch back and forth. So I ended up having to take and pry the covers off of both of those drives and rem disassembled the drives from inside and then used a screwdriver with uh, generous amounts of silicone spray and parts cleaner and managed to free those up and then reassemble the switch and it all worked out so that made that operable and I replaced the rubber feet on the outside which were missing uh, I had to replace these screws here because the original screws someone's actually at one point has actually drilled these out because there's so much corrosion that's uh, inside the chassis itself the top here the antenna that they had attached here they had it actually the antenna element was grounded so what I had to do is I had to build a standoff to mount that and then I just used a uh, grommet to further insulate the antenna from there and I cleaned all the corrosion off of here as best I could with a wire wheel and on the back side here the uh, original power connector was completely corroded up so I went ahead and just uh, assembled my own with some power poles here and soldered it up and you can see the state of corrosion that's inside of here and it was much worse before so I cleaned that up as best I could. If I really wanted to do it, I could actually sandblast it and repaint it, but uh, that's a little more detail than I want to get into it right now. I need to get another C-cell holder for it here because this requires eight C-cells in order to power the radio and not just four, which the uh, other radio, the Gladding Islander I have, will just run on six volts, whereas this one requires a full 12-volt battery. The antenna on top I had to repair also. You can see how this comes off and all this is a, a stereo jack here. So I had to replace a stereo jack on the uh, uh, degree wheel and there was so much corrosion that was underneath that. It was that, that just nasty white corrosion that happens with dissimilar metals with aluminum to where it was just piled on there and I ended up cleaning most of that up. So return that to serviceability and it works really good power it up here because it's a serious mismatch of gifts and responsibilities I can remember when I was working in a church over 30 years ago there was a fellow and you can see it's a and their good null on it becoming desperate financially and I had a friend who had a dealership next door to the church, and I went to him and I said, is there anything you can do to help this fellow? Give him a job. Eagle Thea says the rest. You see the FM is good on it. And it also picks up the, and not only AM broadcast and FM broadcast, it also does the uh, shortwave old marine band. It does the VHF spectrum which is basically covers two meters up to 175 megahertz it does your long wave beacons and the uh, tuning movement works well and it's a like I said a neat piece of equipment it's not in pristine shape by any stretch of the imagination but it's serviceable and this is the project of the day I'm starting on which is an older unit in UHF desktop repeater and I just lit it up and I'm going to have to uh, figure out what frequency it's on first. So let me get back to work. And got one many more projects that I picked up to work on that I'll share with you. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.